Blockchain oracles are a crucial part of the Web3 ecosystem. What they do, they bring off-chain data to decentralized applications. So, for example, some presidential election winner and you have some betting app and uh, you can bring that information about who is the winner of their election and you put it to the on-chain app via an oracle. And what's most important is that you can use uh, the pricing information via oracles for some, like, let's say, perpetual DEXs. There are multiple videos about that available on YouTube that I go into many details. In this one, I would like to go about uh, three projects that I found that are oracles. I mean, I found one and two are just there for comparison, to be honest. So recently I stumbled upon Stork, which is introducing a new model, a new type of oracle. And I am going to talk about Pyth and Chainlink as the two bigger players to just kind of situate uh, where we are with oracles at this point in space. But of course, like right now, Chainlink, if we ask where we are, we are with Chainlink and it's like a monopolist in the space. So it powers hybrid smart contracts on multiple blockchains. And according to DeFi Llama, I'm just checking right now, there are 19 blockchains uh, Chainlink is integrated with. 19 chains sounds like a lot, and it is if you compare it to single chain oracles, but if you compare it to other newer generation oracles such as Pyth, Pyth supports like 61 chains, as it says on the DeFi Llama website. So comparatively, you can say it's wide network, but not really, you can really go wider here. So Chainlink basically works like a middleware between uh, DeFi web pre applications and uh, APIs. So they are like nodes, they are calling for data via APIs, they get the information from the real world into these nodes, and then web free applications can interact with Chainlink nodes and get this data that they need. And what's kind of the main value proposition of Chainlink is that it is secure, reliable, and very accurate. And the idea of maintaining this and then kind of the caveat of maintaining this whole thing is that it's rather slow and, as I said, does not support as many chains as other oracles can. So there are like, uh, it's called the heartbeat. That's how often the data gets updated and it can be hours or even a day. Byth, in comparison, has the heartbeat of only one to two seconds. So the data is updated more frequently. It's much more human, you can say. Uh, and a Stork, for like further comparison, it has uh, the sub 10 millisecond heartbeat. Uh, I guess it has some kind of tachycardia, <laughs> but it is very fast comparatively. So this shows um, and kind of makes you think of the use cases that would be applicable for different ones. So if you really want security reliability, Chainlink, you go with that one, but it really is too slow for multiple applications that are DeFi related. Chainlink seemingly understood that this was an issue because Byth was eating up some of the market share of Chainlink and they recently, uh, Chainlink, introduced a pool method that improved their speed. However, as I see on the website of Chainlink right now, there are only two networks that support this pool method. So it's already great that we have some kind of competition because Chainlink being monopolistic can kind of um, risk uh, the slowing of the progress of the whole space of oracles. And now let's briefly touch on Byth. So unlike Chainlink, which is built on top of Ethereum, Byth has its own, I mean, it is its own blockchain network. So on one hand, it sounds like a great decentralized super chain. On the other hand, it, uh, in order to offer cross-chain functionality, it has to use a bridge, which is not ideal and it relies on the wormhole for cross-chain functionality. Uh, this approach that Pyth takes is also the whole idea of behind Pyth is rather different. It focuses on high performance price feeds. So it's uh, very specific to DeFi, whereas Chainlink is more general purpose. And yes, yeah, so that's kind of a long story short, honestly. And uh, the price updates, I already mentioned that Chainlink is in the order of hours. I mean, for some it's in the order of minutes and it can be even a day for others. Um, Pyth is in the order of one to two seconds. So these two, Pyth and Chainlink, are the main big players in the field. We, if we open DeFi Llama, we have also Winklink, which is like 15% of the total value secured by this Oracle protocols. Um, however, Winklink is Tron chain only and Pyth and Chainlink uh, support multiple chains. And if we have a look here, so Chainlink secures 400 protocols, supports 19 chains, 
$21 billion in total value secured, then Winklink is almost $7 billion, but again, it's only uh, one chain. And then Pyth is uh, 61 chains, 205 protocols, and almost $5 billion in total value secured. At least that's as of today, which is Saturday, August the 10th. We'll see maybe if this changes later, but I doubt it. I mean, <laughs> it did pretty far that Chainlink is. And now that I put out the landscape of the oracles at this particular moment in time, I would like to tell you about Stork that is introducing something pretty new, and I'm rather interested to see where it's going to go. Stork introduces the open data market as a new paradigm for on-chain data provisioning, and that's how they describe themselves. Um, long story short, if you paint it with broad brush strokes, in the end it's still a price oracle. However, it is much more customizable, and the idea is that it is much more accessible than any other oracle out there. So there are three main components. So first one is data publishers, those are the producers. Anyone with high quality data can become a verifiable data provider. They have an LDK so that you can, in a standardized way, provide your data and whoever you are. So we have data consumers. Those are the main kind of people who are going to buy and pay for the provided data. So they access data directly from publishers or via composite Oracle services, which are the next kind of type of consumers, even I would say. So this works as if um, there is no middleman in between the data providers and data consumers. And this is similar to Pyth. Pyth also connects directly data producers and data consumers. Chainlink is different in this regard. Chainlink itself is a middleware between the producers and the data consumers. So here we have the Pyth similarity and Chainlink difference. Um, and the composite Oracle services, which are a cool thing that I did not really see in any other place. So those are customizable and specialized Oracles that you can build yourself. Basically, anybody can build them. They offer the ability of you to take several different data providers and compress the data of them into one single kind of uh, stream of data to make sure it's more secure, maybe more reliable, or if you really need high accuracy. And Stork actually has their own composite oracle already. That is a project that they started with that is called Stork Burps. And Stork Burps, I'm not going to go into too much detail. But basically, it's a composite Oracle system that offers over, I mean, supports over 2000 assets. And it is uh, placing its main emphasis on speed with a sub 10 millisecond heartbeat. And uh, the idea is perps, perpetual dexes, perpetual stuff, and anything like that. So for high frequency trading and very fast chains. And that's kind of all I wanted to say. I can put like a comparison table, I think, in the end of this video to kind of briefly touch on the main points of comparison of these um, three Oracle types. Chainlink established is a very established protocol. It offers reliability, wide range of services, more general purpose and strong security measures. Byth is high performance and it has its own blockchain for increased decentralization. And Stork is a very new concept of the open data market with ultra fast data delivery and customization as like the main selling point. And now let's briefly talk about the community engagement opportunities. So Chainlink and Byth are already out with their link and Byth tokens respectively. So if you're interested, you can go check out those tokens. Some people like them, some people don't. No financial advice, um, it's at your own risk. But Stork is not yet out and does not have its own token list yet. So based on their Discord, there is an interesting thing that's going on that I think you may want to participate in. They have different levels on Discord and these levels may have a purpose, as they say. And I mean, take it as you wish, but I think it's worth exploring. There is a trend here that I perceive in a way that newer projects are coming and trying to or attempting to disrupt the space with a monopolistic player that has been out there for years uh, with more customization. So like uh, Symbiotic came and disrupted and took off some of the market share of Eigenlayer. I think a similar thing may happen here with... Uh, Stork and uh, actually the same uh, starts with an S as well and the Chainlink and Chainlink has been there has been the monopoly thing for like four years 
which is kind of insane. Um, but anyways, that's all I have for you in this video, and let's see how it plays out. Thank you very much for watching, and see you in the next one.